We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. 12, 11, And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous six, and dangerous five, four, and greatest adventure three, on which man two, has ever embarked. One, zero, liftoff, we have a liftoff. Half a century ago, Apollo 11 rocketed into the unknown, on and humanity 11. went further than ever before. We crew felt the weight of the world on our shoulders. Uh, we knew that everyone would be looking at us, friend or foe, and we wanted uh, to do the best we possibly could. Right, we're go, flight. Okay, we're go. Around the planet, eyes locked on history, unfolding 240,000 miles above it. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Man on the moon. Oh, boy. What? <laughs> okay, we're going to be busy for a minute. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. July 20th, 1969. Neil Armstrong placed the first footprint on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. A moment that may never be surpassed. Isn't that something? Magnificent sight out here. Humans actually landing on, getting out of a spacecraft, and then walking on another, another heavenly body. How the heck did you guys do that without computers? We have more computing power in my Fitbit today than they had in the Apollo spacecraft. I was not alive when this happened. You want to see it I would yourself? love to see something myself, yeah. And so, 50 years on, we reflect as Apollo 11 is beamed onto the Washington Monument. I was concerned for the astronauts, and I was concerned about where, would they survive, and so there was the risk and the danger that, and the excitement uh, for them and the sense of uh, the unity of the country that came along when it was a very divided time. Do you think it's time to go back there? I think it'd be cool. I think there's still a lot more out there. We don't know it all. Here, men from the planet Earth, first set foot upon the moon. Only 12 people have walked on the moon, all white men. We came in peace for all mankind. And how much of a fail is it, in a way, that, that a, a woman hasn't stepped foot on the moon? It's certainly disappointing. You know, we know from research that diverse teams perform better. And, and so the fact that it took us so long to get women into space and that we still have not had a woman set foot on the moon uh, and that we still don't have humans on Mars. But NASA hopes to land on Mars within a decade on the moon again within four years. This is the next giant leap. It's not going back to the moon just to go there for a couple hours or go over there for a couple days. I mean, we're gonna go there and stay there. We're gonna build a sustained lunar presence to learn how to live off planet, to be able to develop the technologies that we need, prove out the concepts that will allow us to go to Mars and then put the first humans there. There will be a moon landing in the modern era, but nothing will ever top the first. Well, joining me now, Dr. Rebecca Smethurst, an astrophysicist from the University of Oxford, and John Logsdon, founder of the Space Policy Institute at George Washington University and former member of the NASA Advisory Council. Um, John Logsdon, did mankind make the most of its moonshots or, or did it lose some of the opportunity? Well, I think it sent a message to the world that was very intentional which is that the United States did this great thing, but we did it on the behalf of all humanity. And I think uh, the astronauts, as they toured the world after the mission, uh, saw that people said, we did it, we humanity. And I, I think that was a great success. What would be the point of going back? Well, we really haven't explored the moon. Uh, Apollo landed in six different places, all near the equator. So most of the body has not been explored, and there are those that believe that there are valuable resources uh, at the poles of the moon. There are scientists eager to put their radio telescopes on the far side of the moon, which is one of the places you can escape television uh, in, in the solar system. So there are a, a whole set of reasons for returning. Now, Rebecca Smithhurst, why would you go back? 
I go back for the science. The amount of science we got from the Apollo missions like, cannot be understated. We learned so much about the history of the Earth and the Moon system, how the Moon formed, even the history of our own planet as well from the similar rocks we found on both the Earth and the Moon. And going back, I think, you can't understate you know, how much will come from it that wouldn't be expected either. The, the push forward in technology that came from the Apollo missions was felt all around the globe. So it would be more than a staging post to Mars, which is how some people see it. Well, it would definitely be that, exactly. But also, there's so many unanswered questions still about our moon and our place in the universe and, and how the solar system came to be that can be answered by sending people back to the moon. Well, what difference does the, you know, the, the way space exploration is geared now in terms of the mix between private sector and, and governments and international cooperation make? Yeah, I think it means that um, possibly things are slower than it was back then because there was that real push from, and it was one sort of team in a single country working together. Now you've got contracts that go out to various different companies like SpaceX and Boeing that make it so that NASA can unload some of the, the burden, but obviously then things are slower with different teams. But I think it means that we'll benefit more in, in the long run because you'll have more people working on this, you'll have more satellites being launched into orbit and, and technology improving all the time. Um, John Longston, how do you see that? I mean, does the commercial sector's involvement in space improve the space race or, or, or sort of cheapen it in some way? Well, I don't think it cheapens it. I think it broadens the base of expertise, broadens the base of funding. I still think this is, in the initial years, is going to be a government-led activity in partnership with other countries, the U.S. government probably in the lead because it, it has more resources to spend on space than anybody else, but with the competence of the private sector, with different styles of doing work. So I, I think it's a public-private coalition internationally based that will take us back to the moon. And where before and it Mars. was a race between the U.S. and the USSR, you know, India and China are now playing important roles. How, how does that change? The, the, well, the, the race. Uh, it's, it, it's not a race. It's certainly a competition, but a race has a finish line, and I don't think there's any finish line in what we're up to now, which is, is a long-term development of space exploration. Uh, uh, moon, Mars, other places uh, as they become available. Uh, India is only sending a robotic mission to the moon. It's scheduled for launch on Monday, I think, at this point. Uh, China says it will send humans to the moon in the 2030s. So if it's going to happen in the coming decade, it's going to be a U.S.-led undertaking with, I hope, an international coalition involved. Uh, Rebecca Smithhurst, I mean, haven't we been incredibly slow, really, if you think about it? I mean, what do you think you'll see in your lifetime? I mean, slow is, is an odd phrase, obviously, because we did all the Apollo missions so quickly. They were in the space of sort of three years. Yeah, and it was cost, I mean, since then. Yeah, it was cost that's really stopped us going back in terms of humans on planets, again, my, uh, the moon included. But I think in my lifetime, I think humans on the Mars is definitely uh, something on the cards. Like uh, the other guest said, you know, there's no end, there's no finish line. So it's where we push from there. But I think the Mars goal is so achievable if we can get this sort of lunar base set up around the moon that allows the missions further on to the solar system to be much cheaper because you don't need as much fuel to get there. I think it's a, a really achievable goal. Um, 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 where would you project, John Logston? What do you think you'll live to see? Well, 50 years ago this week, I was at Kennedy Space Center. I watched these three guys walk by me on the way to the moon. I saw the launch. By the way, it happened. There was no conspiracy. <laughs> uh, my, my hope in my lifetime is to see that happen again. Uh, I wish I had the, the years left to, for Mars, and maybe I will, but uh, uh, I, th I think we're on the way back, that the momentum is building uh, that this worldwide remembrance of 50 years ago uh, helps uh, provide some momentum uh, for the resumption of exploration, and it's time to go again. John Locks, thank you very much indeed. Rebecca Smithhurst, thank you for coming in as well.